Hi, everybody. Today I'm going to give you guys a short lesson on calculating interval response time. Okay. I'm going to stop my video. That way I can start sharing the, uh, the PowerPoint and then we'll get started. Okay. Okay. I am going to share the uh, PowerPoint. Okay, so interval response time really is the, uh, essentially it's the passage of time between one problem behavior and the next. And so whenever we want to calculate interval response time, we need to look at, okay, how many uh, times is a student engaging in problem behavior over a set amount of time? If you have a, um, a student who potentially um, engages in, let's say, hitting behaviors or um, getting out of their seat or any of that stuff. I mean, it, it doesn't matter as long as it's a problem behavior that, you know, you can, uh, uh, you know, visually see and count, uh, you can calculate the interval response time. So let's take, for instance, you know, this example that I have here. Essentially, you are taking the total amount of time in the school or the, um, you know, the interval. So for instance, if you are in a 60 minute class period that you are observing the student and, you know, as you're you know, observing the student, you collect, you know, data on eight problem behaviors. So in this case, you take, you know, you divide uh, 60 minutes by eight, which is the eight behaviors that you observed and that gives you seven and a half. Okay, so it's seven and a half minutes that pass, you know, between one behavior and the next problem behavior. So in this case, seven and a half is obviously seven minutes and 30 seconds. And so um, if you're trying to calculate, you know, from, you know, a longer observation that exceeds, you know, 60 minutes, you can do it across hours and that's okay too. So for instance, in this example for Kyle, you know, you have a, you know, a student who is poking other students across a six day or a six hour school day. And so as you're observing across these six hours, you document 48 times that, you know, the uh, poking behavior was observed. And if you want to, you know, uh, determine, okay, well, how many, um, how much time expires from one, you know, um, poking behavior to the next poking behavior. In this case, you have uh, 48 uh, pokes, right? So 48 times that the behavior occurred across six hours. And that's an average of eight pokes per hour. But you want to determine not in hours, but in minutes. And so all you do is you take you know, 60 minutes divided by the um, number of behaviors, and that gives you to seven and a half minutes. Okay, so again, that's seven, um, seven minutes and 30 seconds that passes from one poking behavior to the next uh, poking behavior. And so if you are wanting to, um, you know, to provide a reinforcer for the student not engaging in that problem behavior, which, you know, obviously these procedures um, or the procedure that we're talking about is DRO, the differential reinforcement of um, other behavior. You would essentially, since a student is without any reinforcement or anything like that, they're already poking at seven and a half, you know, um, on average, it takes them seven and a half minutes from one poke to the next. So what you could say is, okay, I'm going to, increase that time by eight minutes, because again, you want to ensure that the student is successful at the very beginning. And so you would set your IRT, their interresponse response time to eight minutes. This means that, you know, here you are, you have a timer and the student has to refrain from poking anyone for at least eight minutes. So that's 30 seconds longer than what Kyle was already doing naturally without a reinforcement procedure in place, okay? And so the student would have to uh, not poke for eight minutes. And then if they don't poke for eight minutes then they get the uh, reinforcer, and then you can set the timer again and, you know, and do it again across the eight minute time increments. Or, you know, as we talked in class the other day, you could, uh, 
implement a lot of these other procedures like reset schedule, um, fixed interval, and so forth, okay? And so in a nutshell, that's uh, how you calculate IRT and determine you know, how, what the increment is before a reinforcer is, um, is provided. All right, that's all I have. Thank you all, and uh, I'll see you on the next class time. Okay, take care.